Okay, so there's not a single person watching this video that should get this problem wrong. In other words, 100% of you should be able to figure out the right answer. I'm going to explain why that's the case in just one second. But let's take a look at this problem. We have r minus 5 over 4 is equal to 2. Now we do have a multiple choice question. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 2, B is 5, C is 8, and D is 13. These are the possible solutions for this variable R in this equation. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to solve this in just one second and, of course, explain why everybody should get this right. But I'm also going to show you two different methods to uh, solve this algebraic equation. All right, now, my name is John. I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So let's talk about why no one should get this problem wrong. Now, the first thing that we want to observe here is that we have an equal sign. And an equal sign in mathematics, you can kind of think of this as a balanced scale. So in other words, the right-hand side of this equation is 2. So in order for this equation to be true, this entire left-hand side here, this entire thing, needs to represent the value of 2 because 2 is equal to 2, right? So in other words, 7 is not equal to 2. So we need to think about what value R needs to be in order for this entire thing to be equal to a 2. All right, so if you understand that, well, this is very easy because we have a multiple choice question. In other words, one of these over here is the right answer. So we can just simply start testing values, right? So let's suppose we test 5 and put 5 in for R, okay? So if 5 is what R is equal to, well, we replace this R with a 5. But look what happens. We have 5 minus 5, which is 0. So now we have 0 over 4, which is 0. So this makes the left-hand side of the equation 0, which is not equal to 2. So if we kind of uh, run through these choices, eventually we see that 13 is the right answer because 13 minus 5 is what? Well, that is 8, and 8 divided by 4 is, in fact, 2. Okay, so this is why everybody should have gotten this problem right, even if you didn't understand the algebra, all right? So hopefully this makes sense. And for those of you that still have to take math tests and quizzes, anytime you have an equation a problem, an algebraic equation especially, and you have a multiple choice question, you should be able to get these uh, problems right almost 100% of the time. The only uh, twist is sometimes you have an option down here that says none of the above. So when that is the case, you definitely need to know the algebra. So let's talk about two different ways we can solve this problem. One great way to solve this equation is to think of it as a proportion. Now, a proportion in mathematics is uh, two equal fractions. So in other words, if we had the fraction one half and we set this equal to another fraction that has the same value as one half, maybe like four over eight. Well, this is the definition of a proportion, one fraction that is equal to another fraction. But anytime you have a proportion or two equal fractions, a particular property holds true, and that's called the cross product. So if we cross multiply here, the answers are the same. In other words, the products are equal. So 2 times 4 is what? Well, that is 8, and that is equal to 1 times 8, which is also 8. So again, the cross products are equal anytime you have a proportion. So we can use this concept to solve this equation. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Two 2 math man, you have one fraction here, but you don't have a fraction here. Well, it's easy to make this number into a fraction. Anytime you want to uh, make a value or anything into a fraction, just put it over 1, and now we have a, a numerator and a denominator. All right, so what we want to do here is think of this as two equal fractions because that's, a fact, what we have. So we have this one fraction equal to this other fraction. So now we can use the cross product to clear the fraction. So it's going to be 1 times r minus 5, and that'll be equal to 4 times 2. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So 1 times r minus 5 is r minus 5, 
and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so now we have r minus 5 is equal to 8. So to solve for r, all we have to do is add 5 to both sides of the equation, and r is equal to 13. So again, 13 is the correct answer, but uh, this is one approach, is to use the proportion method. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem, and don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now another way to solve this equation, which is just as good as the proportion method, is to clear the fractions in the equation. And to do that, we need to multiply the entire equation by the LCD, or the lowest common denominator. So we have to look at all the denominators in the equation to figure out the LCD. So here we have 4, and over here we have a 2, but really we have a 2 over 1. So we have the denominators of 4 and 1. Okay, so what's the LCD here? Well, hopefully you can see that it is 4. So if we multiply uh, the equation by the LCD, what ends up happening is we clear the fractions, which makes our life a lot easier. But if you're not careful, you can easily make a mistake, and uh, this is the part of the equation you need to be very careful with. Now, anytime you have sums and differences in algebra and you don't see parentheses around them, you definitely want to put them in. Because if you don't, you can easily make a mistake when it comes to the distributive property. I've seen this error countless times over many decades. So just add in parentheses. Okay, so now we're going to take this 4 or the LCD and we're going to multiply it by everything in the equation. So 4 times r minus 5 over 4, well, to multiply fractions, remember, we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. But what's going to happen here is the 4s are going to, uh, going to cross cancel, and we're going to be left with r minus 5. Okay, now you can have parentheses around uh, uh, this expression right here, or you could just leave it as r minus 5. Either way is fine. But let's suppose you had uh, a 2 down here, okay, and this was 4. So 2 goes into 4, 2. So what would end up happening is that you would have to distribute this 2 into this expression, r minus 5. So you want to be thinking about 2 times r minus 5 written this way, not 2 times r minus 5 without the parentheses. So again, use those parentheses. In this case, it really didn't make a difference. But on the left-hand side, we end up with an r minus 5. Okay, now we still have to multiply this 4, let me kind of erase this here, to the entire equation, each term, right? So 4 times r minus 5 over 4, we saw that was just equal to r minus 5, and now 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so now we have the equation r minus 5 is equal to 8. So to solve for r, all we have to do again is add 5 to both sides of the equation. So r again is equal to 13. All right, now if you got this right, that is fantastic. I'm definitely going to give you a happy face and an A plus, and that applies to those of you out there that uh, just guessed on this problem. That's exactly what you should do if you have a multiple choice question and you don't know the answer, just take a guess, so great job. Now, if you really want to improve your math skills, here are a few suggestions. One, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am posting all types of content from basic math to advanced math pretty much every day. So I have thousands of videos on my channel that can help you out. But if you need to learn a specific course like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Pre-Calculus, etc., make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.